Ja, okay. So how are you all? Are you been good? <laughs> good. So I'll I like to hear how all of you doing your Dharma practice, Dharma questions. Maybe I'll speak a little bit at the beginning and then I like to hear how, how are you doing. Okay, <clears throat> so the question comes, what is a Dharma practice? What is a spiritual practice? What that means? What that means? Uh, what that means to for personally for yourself? It is a traditional something exists in the world, so you are trying to integrate it, or something that, as a, like a oxygen, we need it. So there's two things. Uh, so I think Dhamma practice you can see from two point of view. One thing is maybe as a solution for challenge into the life. Maybe Dhamma practice from one another angle. It is not all about fixing the problem, but Dhamma practice is to take yourself as a more further um, further your knowledge. Knowledge is Knowledge is almost in your hand. Now you have a smartphone, you ask any question, it will give you answer. <laughs> so, further what? Your mind. Uh, not understanding. It's not about understanding. It's not so much how quick you can think. It's not so much about how you are quick think and able to bring solution. Maybe Dharma practice is not not necessary about that. Maybe Dharma practice is uh, some kind of able to uh, absorb good experience and bad experience. Able to absorb. So capacity of our mind can be expanded. So maybe that's the Dharma practice. Uh, Dharma practice should not become like kind of a solution. A solution. It's like, okay, okay, I, it, it Dharma not, should not become like a breathing exercise. Okay, I need to just breathe. Breathing can help us, can become solution to some kind of relief. But the Dharma practice may be, you know, able to absorb able to see from many different angles, able to, dharma, maybe Dharma practices, I need to, like you, Dharma practice basically means your mind become like a foam mountain. What that means? Basically, it can go through different seasons, it can go through different climates, but it stay able to kind of stay form, able to kind of ground it. So Dharma practice, maybe we are trying to our mind and our emotion to become able to go through different climates and different seasons, but still it's able to stay as a form. So maybe Dharma practice is a co our consciousness to kind of really ground in, able to ground and uh, to able to face all these different changes, different, uh, you know, uh, challenge. So anyway, maybe Dharma practice need to see in, in a one angle from that kind of way. In a one angle, Dharma practice is maybe it is a, a, through the practice of a Dharma, our mind Our mind becomes much more 
much more kind of <coughs> clear clarity of mind and uh, awareness of mind becomes much more kind of deepening. Okay, so maybe the point over here is what I'm trying to make is uh, Dhamma practice is uh, should not become like a checklist. Okay, I done that, so I feel good. Dhamma practice is not about feel good. <laughs> Uh, so I think we need to, at least we need to kind of like a, uh, uh, look at it very carefully, like, okay, so now when weather is good, when everything is perfect, anybody can do good Dhamma practice. <laughs> when, when there's no challenge, when everything's a kind of a smooth and a Dhamma practice, and Meets of a chaos, meets of a difficulties, and then able to do a Dharma practice, able to see the chaos from the lens of a Dharma and table. So how we do Dharma practice? Dharma practice maybe Dharma practice maybe only happens in the middle of a chaos. Only Dharma practice can happen in only in the middle of a chaos. When everything is a kind of looks nice, warm. And now it's like, a, you know, our weathers are very strange. Yesterday, winter, and today, summer. <laughs> Maybe next day is winter back. Uh, so, you know, Dharma practice uh, mm, is... Uh, Maybe Dharma practice only grow, you know, you make a progress when there's a chaos. You know, so like a... Dharma practice, of course, you don't have to create chaos to deepening your own Dharma, but I think there is that that's so when you are when your your own daily practice need to be prepared for the chaos. There's a kind of standard chaos in the life that kind of comes comes and goes, season season chaos. <laughs> and there's a surprise chaos. So our own daily Dharma practice is basically like a, like a people who are sports. They are trained, they are trained, they are trained, they are training for whatever the uh, winter Olympic or the summer Olympic. <laughs> so we have our own different Olympic games, personal Olympic games. <laughs> So we are training. So Dharma practice is basically preparing for those different events that's going to come up. Okay. So, so I think not as a, just to kind of pass through, but you are you are prepared. You are able to get ahead. You are able to move ahead. You know, your mind is prepared, you're, there's understanding involving, there's awareness involving. You are trying to look at much more broader, not get caught into the Pacific. So dumb, what is a Dhamma practice? So that's, I think, uh, uh, one thing is uh, really, in a generally, okay? So now, how we prepare Dhamma practice? How we prepare? So way, from where we started, how we start? You know, how we start. Now, now the first thing is, uh, like for example, day-to-day -day basis, I think some way to kind of like a motivation, you know, motivation, you know, training in the motivation. I will do motivation training for like a, almost making kind of like a sincere commitment for three weeks. Every morning I will like not just reciting but sincerely thinking as much possible positive motivation in very general and specific also specific motivation basically motivation that specific motivation is uh, related with uh, your own individual personal challenge and karmic challenge but the, you can also you have to have the general motivation which is a very inclusive for all living beings you want to kind of to do something. And then there's a specific motive. So I think, uh, you know, kind of, that kind of motivation will really help us to uh, pay attention. Pay attention. Awareness and uh, pay attention. 
the more we are pay attention and aware, I think you know, kind of there's a less habit influence, habit able to reduce because of the, that awareness and the intention. Okay, so I think number one is a general motivation and a specific motivation. Specific motivation is uh, related with uh, your own, our own personal winter Olympic game or summer Olympic game or monthly Olympic game. Or we have our own <laughs> games, uh, kind of seasonal games comes up. Uh, that time we are ready to even we won't get like a gold medal but at least we get like a silver <laughs> okay <laughs> so so general motivation specific motivation is uh, i think you know so dharma practice is a really way we start start with the uh, motivation motivation even sometimes the the scholars also like what is a meditation you know so, so the meditation uh, meditation meditation posture is uh, just kind of like a, doesn't really is a meditation just a posture mm -hmm. and uh, meditation is a really the medit you know need to be done by mind mind and there's like so then what is that just positive thinking or positive motivation so positive motivation which is uh, defines the meditation you know uh, meditation is just kind of like a concentration. Concentration in a developing concentration of a mindfulness. Uh, is this kind of, in the scholars, they will debate even the just being mindful and concentration can be meditation. Meditation is a transformation of our human intention is a def definition sometimes there's a discussion how you define meditation meditation means transformation of a human intention you know transformation of a human intention broader sense and the individual personal sense you know there's a, this kind of like a, so i think your own motivation practice in, you know just basically you know we can do like a prayer, you know, six times or five times a daily basis. Motivation, something setting up uh, four, you know, like five times or six times. Usually we do morning, but I think it's not strong enough. I think it needs to be reminded five times, you know, in, a, in a, you know, pr like a prayer in Islam five times, you know, like in. Tibetan Buddhism, sometimes we have in, in advanced practice six sections, you know, Guru Yoga. But like having something, you can divide it your day and some, somehow the general motivation, a specific motivation, somehow you take a, like a two minute every day, two minute just kind of like a sincerely kind of like a reflecting. It don't have to be long and complicated, just your thoughts putting into those reflections six times a day for let's just try for three weeks six times a day general motivation and specific motivation six times a day for three weeks or one month <laughs> so we need to experiment our own self you know so what that motivation can play important role in our own life so that motivation becomes the kind of that motivation really helps us to give the kind of like alarmed our Dharma wisdom. Because lots of we have a lots of Dharma wisdom, but they are in like a in the, the in the book, like a sometimes book that you needed but difficult find in the mass of the your book. And similarly, our Dharma knowledge and the Dharma blessings, we have everything. But when things need it, we cannot find it. <laughs> we cannot find it. And so, so even sometimes we find, but it's so delayed. <laughs> it didn't came in the right time. It so came, it like comes after two days later. And then you are like, you know, like already, you know. Uh, so basically, uh, motivation is uh, really important to not only in a general your own dharma practice particularly your dharma wisdom to able to manifest 
when it needed, when you face your challenge. So really motivation, you have to be really give a lots of, lots of, uh, uh, you know, lots of uh, attention. And it's simple, keep it simple. Now, uh, be, now again, sometimes then we go lots of into the wisdom area and, and uh, you know, like for example, meditation of emptiness or third noble truth, the truth of the path. Uh, and that wisdom is uh, not so much It's not necessary to you know I think I think number one wisdom is uh, applying wisdom not necessarily means means you need to kind of uh, Figuring out what's the truth and the reality. Mm. Not necessarily, I think. Wisdom is a fundamental awareness that can skillfully, basically you build some kind of a skillful means, not stiff. Wisdom is not stiff. Wisdom awareness is awareness. Basically, in awareness, you can somehow able to sense this is the right timing, this is the right moment, there's like a little bit more kind of like a broader vision or awareness. Somehow you able to apply in the right place, in the right time, in the right conditions. So, uh, so basically, I think the first thing is that wisdom awareness is uh, something that's uh, that awareness comes from very calm state of mind very calm, that kind of very intellectual and very trying to be, can come through very unsettling ground and come this kind of like a very aggressive. Maybe it can be quite precise, but the result is not necessarily good. So wisdom, fundamental, I think for us, wisdom means it needs to first step comes through calm state of awareness, calm state of awareness in a foundation. So there's a something that's, uh, it's not about answering the question, it's able to see the background of the question. It's able to see and sense more than just the straightforward question or the doubt or the anything. So like, uh, so wisdom is we need to see in a training in a wisdom is that we need to train ourselves first things to able to calm through the state of a calming we able to see not narrow vision of the question or the fear or the doubt but the more broader aspect of the so mind is calm state of a mind is naturally able to expand and able to move so practice of a wisdom we need to train that grounded and expand view of a reality. It's not the specific view of reality. So through that, the specific view of a reality depends into the time and the situation. When we need to kind of set our mind into that specific reality and the view depends into the situation. Sometimes we rush for the, the specific view on reality, we ignore so many background, and sometimes it doesn't really kind of solve the, your situation. So I will say wisdom as a two layers, the layer of a kind of more broad awareness coming through, coming through kind of a kindness and a calmness. That's important. If there's not calmness and kindness, that awareness is no way to opening up. Okay? So that's important. That's the, that's the kind of like the, the lotus. Then you have a, uh, you know, in, anyway. <laughs> uh, so, and, and based on that, then Pacific reality, the Pacific reality. Uh, so, 
then I think, uh, like for example, if practice of wisdom, you know, your own karmic situations arise, in the practice of wisdom, first you start in a calm, in a kind state of a foundation, and then you have a, that kind of a expansion of your awareness. And uh, based on that expansion of awareness is a processing your karmic challenge. Okay? It's processing. It's not trying to answer anything. It's just trying to be aware of your karmic challenge. And then gradually to really to, to and uh, really to, res uh, to as a transcending or transforming is uh, comes to the specific reality from the wisdom meditation point of view is basically comes to like okay it just you have to come to specific reality is uh, uh, not fixing out there is basically revisioning of yourself re uh, revisioning of yourself uh, uh, mm. Revisioning. Okay, I have limited English, so revisioning. So basically, vision of yourself. The vision of yourself. Restating. Clarifying. So basically, uh, in that observation of uh, in, uh, the first awareness, I think you will naturally see you will naturally see, you are naturally able to see there is a fabricated vision of yourself, which is the attraction, attracts all the karmic seasons. Okay, so the answer, the, 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 the Pacific way of dealing is a kind of purifying, you know, kind of, the, the word fabricated vision of yourself Maybe it's kind of a little bit too strong, but more kind of like a magnified it, vision of yourself. That can include your emotion, how emotionally you are connecting with yourself. That can be like a, that can be like a, related with your childhood. That can relate with your pardo time. That can relate with your past life. So many things are tied it with that. So basically. I think, you know, sometimes, you know, like uh, uh, from the Buddhist point of view, the ultimate healing is that you heal the present vision of yourself, can heal lots of trauma related with the past, uh, lots of prevent in the future. So. So Pacific reality is a basically, uh, it don't have, I mean like there is a philosophical d definition and descriptions, but the, in a way, how we connect emotionally with our own self. That have a, some kind of tightness. Uh, it's kind of like a strange, it, it is an energy, is a much more kind of shoot outward, but is coming through tied it from in 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 a word you know so therefore i think there's a i think the fundamentally uh, the first wisdom awareness that kind of like a very kind and grounded uh, base you know that kind of expansion and based on that and then you are having some kind of kind of a basically loosening up of a sense of a self sense of a feeling of a self kind of like a, uh, so in a philosophical terminology, they will say like basically you need to lose the intrinsic grasping of a self. So, so from the Nagarjuna point of view, he blames everything for one thing. <laughs> oh, every problem is a blame for one thing, is a one only, is a intrinsic grasping of a self everything the world problem the corporation problem individual problem relation <coughs> problem everything nagarjuna blame for one thing one thing only one thing if we fix that only one thing <laughs> that's i think is a good 
is this not Nagarjuna is not pointing for a million things, <laughs> only one thing. And from his from the, his wisdom point of view, grasping of self. Somehow, once we're able to ease that, ease that, he said, like everything will be fine. World will be peace. <laughs> Our self will be peace. Our mind will be peace. You know, maybe there's a. You might have a still something's going upside down in there. Doesn't matter. Once you have a, that kind of like a, a ease, peace with the self. You know, you will make it through any situation. You will make it through any situation. So Nagarjuna is basically saying. You know, fundamentally, how we hold so-called self. But there's no way to point. So Nagarjuna, you know, keep going. It's like, he says, like, the, you know, somehow to finding the right balance way to holding the self. And that is the solution for everything. But right way to holding the self, that, that self you also cannot find in Nagarjuna. <laughs> so there's some kind of complicated way of holding that self in a very balanced way. Because uh, anyway, so, so that Pacific wisdom, when I'm talking about the Pacific wisdom, is, a, is a, not so much individual reality, individual karmic reality you're trying to you know, they, it will become endless. It become endless. So, the main thing is uh, here the the grasping of a self. Will if we able to kind of keep it somehow, we have to train our own self. You know, we I say like six times a day or five times a day train in a motivation. Likewise, we need to have some kind of exercise of how to kind of like a loosening up where we holding the self six times a day or five times a day, we need to tell our own self, let me, how I can do that. You, the text will not necessarily go through detail, but we need to some kind of find our own way to working. We need to build up, we know, we know the theory, we understand the theory, and the theory makes sense. Now implementing, we need to do some kind of like, like an like a exercise, there's a consistent of uh, at least try for th three weeks or three week <laughs> or three months or three year or three day or three minutes. <laughs> Tibetan likes the three, the number three. <laughs> okay, so so some way to I think so so basically Dharma practice as I mentioned earlier, one thing is a motivation. I think we have to really invest some type of a, uh, yoga of a mind in the word yoga. You know, the word yoga, uh, Sanskrit word yoga, Tibetan word nanjur, nanjur, and in a Tibetan literature text, the yoga is so much emphasis for the mind, not that much to the physical. It have lots of word yoga, 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 this yoga, that yoga, on on yoga, on and on on yoga, but all the yoga emphasis to the mind, not so much to the physical. There's a little bit in the physical, but not too much. This is so many word yoga is expressed, but it's all into the mind. The mind have a good yoga. Once we have a good mind yoga stereo, <laughs> yoga for the mind, yoga stereo for the mind. <laughs> Once we have a, that you know, perfect shaped. When the, when the mind is perfect shape, everything is in a perfect shape. When the mind is in a good shape, the world is in good shape. <laughs> when mind is not in a good shape, only the body <laughs> is, is not too stable. You know, so the mind, so, so the, the Kind of like the in the physical yoga, the first you do the sun citation, whatever we do that, you know, seven times or something like that. In the same way, in the mind yoga, motivation, we have to do seven times or six times. Uh, that uh, rhythm, 
we need to build for mind to get that rhythm mind to get you know basically mind is a something that uh, you can easily influence you know okay so now now it comes to the wisdom as I mentioned earlier uh, wisdom is a so what is a wisdom training ultimately wisdom training is uh, I feel it is uh, just how you how you hold the karmic journey you know how we wisdom tra wisdom practice is uh, how we we'll drive the karma how will you drive the karma <laughs> are you going to drive the karma in a hundred miles per hour or the you the most time we are driving in a 200 miles per hour so Nagarjuna is all the time telling slow down slow down slow down slow because because of a, without good brake we are driving our karma 200 miles per hour obviously we all the time get crash and crash and crash and, and block and many people <laughs> so wisdom is not so much about I think uh, is a basically and the question comes why we drive why why we drive in 200 miles per hour <laughs> because of a that grasping that like that's you know that grasping makes to drive karma karmic vehicle karmic toyota <laughs> Prius, Prius, karmic Prius. <laughs> so so basically wisdom is a basically the journey how the way we take the karmic journey and the Nagarjuna basically mentioned the speed limit is a middle way. Middle way. Am I too American now? <laughs> speed limits. I'm totally uh, degenerated. <laughs> okay, so it is basically uh, in another way to look at it. Uh, mind is. Uh, uh, Oh, the wisdom, wisdom, wisdom practice is a, is a, is a, you know, the problem is our mind is so busy, you know, jumping all over, mind get busy, 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 uh, it's just kind of like a, uh, that kind of a, uh, energy, busy energy built through lots of kind of fear, fear fear uh, I think the grasping I think what is the source of a fear I think that that grasping that grasping that mind that's kind of like a uh, so wisdom the wisdom is a loss of training for the cognitive mind observer how we can observe and experience in gentle way and uh, balanced way more equanimity way the 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 things that we karmic result that we go through so maybe the wisdom is not so much about something to discover but wisdom training is uh, how to ride that bicycle you know not you know take out what you call the <laughs> the the train take out the training wheels and we as an individual person able to ride that bicycle karmic bicycle Maybe wisdom is all about how to write, how to write, how to move forward, how to take that, how to kind of go move forward uh, without falling or so. So basically, I think the wisdom is uh, not so much discovering something new, but maybe the whatever you are being aware and whatever we feeling whatever we see and smell whatever we taste the wisdom involves for all this area like way to way to enjoy and way to peacefully apprehend wisdom is maybe something like that wisdom is basically uh, what you call the hospitality, hospitality department <laughs> something to make things much more beautiful Things to make something much more joyful. Things to something can move much more smooth. Wisdom is not necessary. So, 
Sometimes we comes like a something discovery, realization, and so on and so forth, because it is a coming from the what what makes everything not enjoyable, what makes everything becomes painful, is a apprehension of intrinsic intrinsicness, something independent and in intrinsicness. So, so, so therefore, and sometimes the language comes. We we somehow. Uh, need to see emptiness. Okay, so maybe maybe the, the seeing non-seeing intrinsicness is a seeing emptiness. We don't need to make to seeing emptiness. We need to make an effort to avoiding seeing intrinsicness. That's the I think the job is done. <laughs> if we able to avoid to see the intrinsicness of your present reality, past reality, and a future reality, future dreams, past histories, present experience. If we're able to avoid to experience this whole thing through, through the lens of an intrinsic reality, I think that absence of a non-seeing through intrinsic reality is a seeing emptiness. We don't need to make us something effort. Let me see how to empty, how to see emptiness. None seeing intrinsicness. If we're able to avoid to, to not to see intrinsicness. So there will be different methods and the logic and the reasons to convince what we're seeing is a not reality. And we are, it's a very legit and it's a very right things to do to not seeing the intrinsicness. So therefore, we have uh, these convincing logics and reasons. And uh, can, I mean, like, it looks like a very kind of cl uh, uh, theory or something like that, but the fundamentally comes down uh, meditation of emptiness. Sometimes I feel it is the ultimate counseling therapy for self. <laughs> it's a therapy for self. Meditation of empty, you know, is a basically, a, the reason I'm saying in that therapy is a, is, is there is a, like, a, the meditation of emptiness require full mindfulness related with the self. In the number one, is that really being full present and aware? Is not so much aware of what's happening. No, so-called self, so so-called so I, full present. You know, like uh, it's not so much what I am feeling and this and that. No, just for the self, just for the self, just for the I, just for the I. You have until you are not able to. Pay, give a full attention and mindful awareness to the self, there's no way to meditate in emptiness. There's no way to meditate in emptiness of self. Okay? So now full attention to self is not as a selfishness point of view, is nothing that there's no agenda. It should not come through agenda. Anything you come to full attention with the self with the agenda, then our habit kicks and saying takes over to the self cherishing. So it, it it need to be it should not be specific things. It need to be general the self the I. You know somehow you're building full uh, attention without any narrative story with the self. And that way of, that's I, th I think difficult. This. We are only used to relating with the self is what self needed, what self don't need it. You know, it's all about tran trans, trans, no, transaction. transaction way of uh, relating with the self. Okay, so that need to be avoided when we say like a full attention for self. Somehow this story comes up but we need to fully avoid, fully kind of ignored, able to ignore. But it's very difficult to ignore. Okay? Is uh, so so now I think that 
that full attention for self even without going through like another layers of a meditation of emptiness of self that full attention for self without those conditional way uh, it really gives you a, quite a good healing quite a good healing quite lots of trauma can be healed that it's not necessarily you have to listen for the story you are not necessarily ignoring the story but you are kind of in a general in a fundamental full attention unconditional in a kind of like awareness of a self and that's I think a really really important that's also like a foundation for the loss of karmic therapy healing healing will start okay now to complete the whole process then you have to have a some kind of like a conversation and the meditation of emptiness in the self is a, some kind of conversation with a, with a, that kind of like a awareness of unconditional self uh, and that's kind of like a conversation as a not judging but kind of laying out the options and the laying out the options not based on a specific karmic situation but the very all pervasive experience of how the relation with the self have a one unique character that for all different experience is a where you hold, where you apprehend, where you're grasping. So you, we, we need to come through meditation of emptiness is uh, something that can kind of relate with all karmic experience with the self, not with the Pacific. You're not dealing with the, the minute you come to the Pacific, you're basically doing the therapy for the symptoms related with the self. Okay, so for meditation of emptiness of self is not so much related with the symptoms, the karmic experience or the trauma related with the self. It's much more into the root. So therefore, so therefore something that's a reflection need to be related with the entire experience with the self. So therefore this kind of like a, the way there is a habit, there is a habit, habit. So it comes to the habit come down to the habit. Habit is all pervasive. So the habit, habit is the way it responds, way self responds with the karmic experience, way self responds to the karmic, uh, karmic experience, way it takes the karmic experience. So, so meditation of emptiness is basically not to experience the karma by self with a not experience through the intrinsicness basically something you are trying to you know like same thing like a, for example physical health uh, sometimes mostly and, and if you do really good way is a uh, avoid putting more things into the body <laughs> none doing not like like for example is intermediate fasting these are like very very healthy for many many different physical situations and a meditation of emptiness is also is not putting something meditation of emptiness is not putting like a similarly like a intermediate fasting you are not putting intrinsicness you are you are cutting out things that you consume so cognitive cons consumption of intrinsicness is a cut through meditation of emptiness cognitive and emo it's similarly like this uh, intermediate what you call that fasting intermittent 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 fasting you have a physical level which is a very very good for your health and similarly with your mental health how we do that kind of thing. So meditation with emptiness is not so much what it is, 
to what to not to. It's like something that you fast. You fast. You know, usually the cognitive mind have, a, you know, as like a, I say, substitute of a junk food is the intrinsic view. The cognitive mind consumes lots of everything intrinsic, intrinsic, which is a really bad calorie for the mind. <laughs> Intrinsic, 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 intrinsic. So meditation of emptiness is basically kind of like a fasting, that kind of like a cutting, that kind of. And so not to see something, but avoid to where you seeing is a meditation of emptiness. Okay, so I think maybe you know sometimes you can. What's, how about dependent arising? Dependent origination. We have to see as a dependent origination. I think, from my point of view, I feel like this is a wisdom fixing things. You want to, you know, we like to fix the everything. So, dependent origination, okay, it's answer the question. It fixes the situation. So, maybe we should not rush to see. Or, or use that dependent or dependent origination for somehow taking that awareness to not to see intrinsic reality. You are that awareness is not to establishing the reality, but that reality observation is to way to avoid seeing intrinsic reality. We, you, we take that energy of that awareness to kind of take that awareness energy to 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 recognizing what we're seeing as the intrinsic reality and how to purify how to kind of get out from that kind of view of reality how we perceive things in reality that's I think there's a, there's a window for that but the dependent uh, dependent origination as a kind of establishing and to kind of answer the question, I think may become like a bandage for the you haven't deeply healed it, but kind of like you put the bandage and it looks like okay, <laughs> you know. So uh, so in a way, Dharma practice is a two two things. Uh, you know, really kind of like uh, six times a day or seven times a day. That's, you know, general motivation and specific motivation. Really kind of like uh, uh, doing that. I think what happens and the wisdom, as I mentioned earlier, basically the world that we experience, the time that we are in this planet, the time that we have right now can be different because the whole the, the, the joyful and everything is a, doesn't define through the this is, is the how the mind experience the, we are basically Dharma practice is making the observer the whatever it kind of takes that information somehow able to process into the neutral way or positive way or not necessarily take everything into the negative way. So Dharma practice is basically uh, the, <laughs> the observer, so-called consciousness, and the mind. Somehow this whole information, karmic information comes in. Usually it makes bad story. Instead of making horror movie, <laughs> It makes more documentary kind of <laughs> nice documentary movie. Tells the what it is, not to making too too. Maybe that's the Dharma practice. No, am I making too too simple? No. What you think? It's good. It's good? It's good. Okay. <laughs> you agree? <laughs> yeah, maybe. And then then uh, that's maybe the step number one. That's the maybe the window. Now we have the. Uh, free requisite to concentration the mind can take into the next level this mind to take to the next level 
and uh, next level what that means what you know like uh, for example <coughs> uh, you know like uh, for example like uh, for example the the idea of a clairvoyant our mind is a capability to have a clairvoyant all of our mind is a capability to uh, better than Google <laughs> although Google knows everything no they say like whatever we do <laughs> but I think it can be step ahead uh, so anyway, the mind, you know, mind is uh, the, the, the way mind knows. The way mind knows is uh, one thing is that uh, usually we use logic and, you know, pattern and many of these things kind of like us. This is a very immature way of uh, knowing things. But the mind is much more capability of that. Mind can know not like a linear way, but mind can also have a capability to know, not necessarily linear, but also simultaneous. You know, mind have a, right now our mind is a very, it needs to work through very like a, uh, like a, what you call that, uh, in a computer, what you call the zero and one? Binary. Huh? Binary. Binary. Uh, this, this, that's kind of like maybe mind can know things only by zero, not by one and you know, without without one, just by zero. You don't need to go through the process. It don't it's somehow so 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 basically uh, it, absence of an intrinsic view open up only knowing through zero only the processing the. Uh, information that mind can able to sense you know so therefore you know sometimes we say like we have the Buddha teach Panjana Paramita Sutra in the virtual peak and at the same time he was uh, teaching Kala Chakra Tantra in South India <laughs> somewhere <laughs> and usually okay when I uh, at the big early time when I hear the what is, what is this he's in Bodh Gaya and suddenly he's in South India <laughs> But all this concept of a time and space can be changed because of the how our cognitive mind process the reality. And time is time and space is created by mind, basically in a function of a one and zero. What you call bind binary, binary sys operating system <laughs> or functioning system so we create that whole kind of way to make a sense but the, there's a different way to make a sense there's a many different way to make a sense so so basically in a in a Buddhist practice you know first thing first we need to somehow our act need to get together that means able to avoid intrinsic view so that means we are now our, uh, we able to put together, and absence of intrinsic view opens up our cognitive mind, way to processing information have a much more capability. Okay, so the way the observer mind process, the way the observer mind able to access, is becomes what you call <laughs> natural intelligent not like artificial intelligence <laughs> anyway so so in a, in a, so therefore the practice of a buddhism in a, the practice go much more deeper is a basically uh, your vision of a reality your vision your the way you perceive the reality the, the life that you spend, you know, sometime in a in an advanced practice, it looks like a, in a mandala, and I feel like you are in in a, in a spiritual spa. <laughs> so, of course, in a uh, in a generation stage, you are kind of imagining. But if we go able to cognitive mind, cognitive mind, when when it have something, some way to 
you can set up your cognitive mind way to experience the reality in different settings. We, right now we have no setting. <laughs> we can set. So cognit so fundamentally, so therefore in a, is it the, the mind as a, you know like a, basically we as a human being, we have a, this very, very old-fashioned way of working our mind is which is right now is very old-fashioned, old-fashioned. <laughs> still still that we are using that model. And Nagarjuna's teaching, Buddha's teaching is saying there is a you can use second model, third model, there's a more different model is within the us. You can use those different uh, you are using this very old model, this it's just all the time <laughs> broken, all the time broke. <laughs> this right now our cognitive so so in a in a in a in a in a philosophical terminology we call this called grossos mind. Semrakwa. Semrakwa. Grossos mind. And it basically means uh, ninety-nine percent right now we're just using that that old model. Uh, very bad for climate. <laughs> polluted. Our mind is so polluted. <laughs> this all all matter. So, uh, so way to not to pollute. The the source of a pollution comes through intrinsic view. Intrinsic way of a taking a information creates this internal pollution. So create many many different problems. So. So taking out that intrinsic, which is the source of a, or what you call this, in climate you say 2OC, CO2. CO2. View of a intrinsic is a internal CO2. So through that, so therefore, in a, so once we're able to that, take it out, all the Vajrayana teaching, in a Tantrayana teaching, is a, now is a really you know, like a deserved and really you are able to kind of... When you say Deity Yoga and this whole thing, it's a fundamentally... The, it's a, it's a fun, Deity Yoga and Mandala and all these things are fundamentally positive way of experience the world around you. Positive way of experiencing. And it makes a sense, once you have a you know, totally seizing the intrinsic view, then I think the mind is so opened. Uh, uh, and of course, in into the practice, you have a different visualization, but in actual, it's much more like how you feel it, how you feel it. It's, you know, much more kind of like a, how you aware, how you aware the world around you. It changes the way you aware the world around you. You know, uh, the I think in a, in a generally, you know, in a in a, when his mind gets much more subtle and. It's basically awareness becomes the main model to way to observe the reality. It's not the discernment and analyzing and the logic and reasons. That doesn't become the main main kind of tool to way to discovering the reality. The awareness awareness becomes the fundamental. And when you're trying to become, the, as an individual practitioner, individually, somehow you're relating to the world and uh, moving forward fundamentally through the just mainly through awareness. Uh, uh, I think n natural different vision or different experience of a world can be happen. You don't have to contrive and see it. I think it's opening up much more naturally. Uh, <clears throat> okay. <laughs> uh, 
I said almost 12.30. I'm sorry, today I was a little bit late. Uh, okay, as I mentioned earlier, I want to open for your questions. So maybe we'll do for half an hour a little bit question. Does it make a sense? Or do, do it make a sense? Do I sing? Make a sense? Okay. Really wonderful. Are you sure? <laughs> complex. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I was wondering if you um, elaborate more on. Um, you talked about uh, establishing uh, emptiness but then being careful not to use dependent arising to put a band-aid on, on your awareness. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'll just say briefly what I think you mean, and maybe you can correct me, okay. um, is uh, sometimes if you try to understand emptiness and then you think about dependent arising you immediately kind of solidify things and instead of reinforcing the emptiness. Um, so my question will be solidifying and reinforcing. What's, what you mean that? Uh, well, solidifying the self-grasping view of, you know, oh, this is, this is me and this is my solid, inherently existent situation and my solid problem and um, just that habit is so strong that it's mm -hmm. easy to, to miss, miss the target. Mm -hmm. So, like, again, I think when you realize emptiness, there will be still some problem, will be there some problem. <laughs> or electricity not working or the pipe was a broke <laughs> i think i think uh, the emptiness the wisdom element is a uh, teaching of a wisdom is a kind of like a proposal to way to re respond how is it uh, is a uh, <clears throat> uh, not to escalate our karma, also it's prevent the escalation of our karmic accumulation. And uh, initially, I think it's just kind of like a prevent to escalation of our karma. And uh, the way to preventing escalation of our karma is uh, you are seeing situation not from narrow view, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you have a, that kind of broad awareness. And then based on that broad awareness, then you build that specific reality. Uh, so it is uh, something that uh, uh, it is uh, the way I understood solidifying. It's not so much about solidifying. Uh, we like to solidify, we like to impose. It's a basically absence. It's just basically n not following the habit. Meditation of emptiness is not following the habit. In this context, is an intrinsic view. Intrinsic view of a self, an intrinsic view of the karmic situation. So basically, kind of like a you put a kind of pause into the, that habit, deep habit, emotional and psychological habit. You pu put that pause. So, not uh, okay. It, it is uh, what you call in English e easy saying than done. What do you call that? Easier said than done. Easy said than done. Yes, pause. It looks nice. It's easy. <laughs> it's the pause. Okay. Now. Now, the, st the, the, the story of the dependent arising can, to, to method to way to pause, not to solidify, <coughs> not to impose, not to clarify, mm -hmm. but to that awareness to way to using, to pausing the view of an intrinsic reality. 
it is not to solidify what is a reality. So my, my point is, meditation of emptiness, I think at the beginning, I think, I, again I'm saying, there is an element of a solidifying, but at the beginning, I think we should not rush to solidify. We should just like a putting that pause, the all effort, all energy to go to stopping that habit. Habit of intrinsic view. It gives a tremendous space for mind and for our emotion. So that's the kind of like the not to solidify. I think that's the I think our problem. Uh, the minute we solidify, our ego win. Ego give you the 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 trick. <laughs> Boom. So at the early stage of a meditation of emptiness just cutting the habit, not taking any bribe from the ego grasping, <laughs> nothing to solidify, nothing that I think just uh, avoiding that habit and then solidifying had to come natural, not imposed. Then the, you know, like uh, how things exist should come uh, non-impose and uh, kind of like a like a learning language naturally you learn the language it's how we learn language just through that through the repetition <laughs> is like a learning a language there's no specific date yesterday I was not learned but today I learned language there's no specific date like like a, there's a clear line solidifying as a phenomena as a nature of a dependent arising like a learning a language. What is the important part is uh, that pause now, 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 yeah, that pause of a view of an intrinsic reality. And then I think that's, that's kind of like a, if we impose to solidifying and trying to see as a nature of, a, trying to establishing of a nature of, a, a, a nature of even in a later, if we do that, I'm, I, I think we might end up in an obstacle. That seeing as a nature of a dependent arising, dependent arising, has to be much more natural. More natural. It's like, not big deal. It's like, one we say solidify, then it becomes a big deal. The minute it becomes a big deal, we are back to square one, to seeing intrinsic, intrinsic view. So, the minute we have a through the state of absence of intrinsic view, more naturally seeing the reality becomes much more kind of like a, much more believable. Okay. <laughs> Did I convince? Okay. That's helpful. Okay, great. great. Yeah. Can I have a question? Yes, yes. Like my observation is that the mind, like, if we try to like, practice like this awareness or emptiness it's just like like moments and it's very easy to, to go to like this normal <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and then it's kind of like dharma happens like like only like from moment to moment and in between it's, it's <coughs> normal like yes habitual yes yes and yes how, how to extend like this mind because yeah. it's, it's like for me it's like if I do meditation, it takes long time mm -hmm. until like mind settles mm -hmm. and so on, and it takes just like a moment to to unsettle mm -hmm. this mind. So I think now again, you know, you know, since we have this mind, some way we have to find a way to take care of this mind. So that's our own personal responsibility. So now I think uh, it's a kind of like a building up positive habit. It's like a Dharma is kind of positive habit, how we build up positive habit. How we, how we, if we, until we don't have a positive habit, we will feel, basically we will not experience the beauty of the world, beauty of the flower, beauty of the anything. It's, we experience 
something beautiful, something joyful. It's a, basically state of a mind is much more open for that. So, so my, my going back to the, I think it's like a Dharma practice is a, like a learning language. You just kind of speak, you speak, you speak, you don't afraid to making mistake, you speak, you're not afraid to making Dharma practice mistake, you're just doing it. So I think uh, that kind of a practice uh, and the time will, I think the ma mainly time and the reflection, you know, you know, I think Dharma, anytime when we face so much deep challenge, you know, as I mentioned earlier, anytime we feel really challenged, there is a big opportunity of a Dharma, pro Dharma progress. You know, you know, like, a, uh, you know, when everything's okay, no challenge, Maybe Dhamma practice less opportunity to Dhamma. Dhamma practice have to grow into the boot camp, <laughs> coming boot camp. So, so, so I think uh, there is lots of. Uh, uh, I think the main thing is uh, Dhamma practice is uh, not to kind of like. Uh, you know, I think how we're relating with the Dharma, you know, the Dharma is, is a Dharma practice, mainly if we see, it's not so much dealing with a, with a kind of like ups and downs into the life. Uh, uh, I think Dharma practice is like much more in a, you know, some way fundamentally able to ground well about our own cognitive and awareness. And uh, that's, I think, the once we have that, that up and downs can come, but up and downs won't be that much serious, you know. So, so basically, way it's the more the better ground, the karmic seasons can be still there, but regardless, it can able to stand still. Uh, so, so I will say dharma practice as a, like a, you know, we need to every day we need to drink and eat, and likewise. Every day we need to do some dharma reflection as a, like a to survival, to survival of the, our body. We need to have a foods and survival of our awareness and mind. We have to have something for that. So what will be for the survival? Uh, to survive or to thrive? Then yes, of course, shine and all that things. But I think this we need to kind of think. You know, like therefore, I was encouraging earlier, like yeah, motivation. You know, maybe train motivation for three weeks, six times a day. You know, let's see, experiment yourself, create your own data, Exp become yourself scientific. <laughs> Just see what happens for that, uh, and then that kind of like uh, avoiding intrinsic view, and uh, that experiment. In avoiding of intrinsic view and uh, recognizing the intrinsic view, the best uh, that, that that lab will be when we have a huge challenge, and that challenge time we have the opportunity to see the intrinsic view and recognize what that looks like, how this manifests. You have a more detailed data we can pull out during that time. And that will be very important to, to in the future for cognitive mind to way to avoid intrinsic view. The minute we avoid intrinsic view, less pollution, the clarity of our mind is there, uh, uh, quality of our memory is there, and uh, uh, presentness of your mind is there, openness of your mind is there, and at the same time, mind is a uh, state of not kind of like a exciting but mind is such a state of a I won't say exciting joy but mind is so present mind is so uh, so alive so alive so present so alive so that's I think the absence of intrinsic view does I answer your question I'm just keep saying I'm not sure I, I think so <laughs> but I have like one one more question regarding motivation uh -huh. Recently, I was checking my motivation. So we are reading this, all these like 
prayers of mm -hmm. bodhicitta, mm -hmm. and then doing some mantra recitation, and I'm like, do I like really have this like motivation that I'm like helping like beings right now? And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's maybe sometimes I do, but um, but other times. I, I, I don't know like how much um, kind of like uh, it should happen like s in spontaneous way, but but I bring mind and, and point somewhere and and just like like do stuff versus like kind of like like I point mind somewhere, but like on the way I have to like kind of like like point direction. <laughs> yeah. Now you're right. You know, sometimes it depends to situation. I think where you come to reading those texts, and usually you're right. Many times you feel no, I cannot do that. That's not true. That's not possible. You're reading, <laughs> but you keep telling yourself not possible. Uh, so I think uh, it is uh, motivation is some kind of positive thoughts towards to, you know. If I have this much, I will give for everything. If I have this much, I will solve the hunger of the world. If I, you know. There is a, if I have this, there is a that way of doing, and over here, six times when as a motivation is like a, not if, it's I want, I want, you know, I want to do. It's not so much, it's, it's just like a, it's like a, just kind of like a sincere imagination of yourself. It's not necessarily it can happen, or usually, same like negative imagination about ourselves is pretty much the same thing, like, yeah, no, not possible, da 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 da. So, so motivation is, I think, kind of sincere, just ima positive imagination. It have to be short. When it be too long, it becomes then you like you know your habits. It interferes and you know it tells a different story. But it's a short and sincere. It's short and sincere. Yes, of course, of course, of course. I want to do that. That's it. We don't need like elaborated and then like all that things. Then sometimes it ruins everything. No. So, so very kind of sincere, deep, you kind of, and then you do this kind of like a uh, unconditional, you know, like a simple, and then six times a day, just kind of like a short, one minute or two minutes. When you read sometimes text, it's a somebody's motivation you are reading. <laughs> and yes, we need to take that inspiration, but in the long term, I think that all the time, when I say encouraging six times the motivation, I, w I will not encourage you to read something. I will say, like, don't read anything, just speak from your own voice and positive imagination. Just simple, simple, simple. Uh, and, and, you know, six times a day or seven times a day, and for three weeks, you are ready to become Bodhisattva camp, <laughs> ready to go to Bodhisattva camp. <laughs> uh, you know, so like, in, in a, that, that way, in that manner. So, uh, so I think, I think uh, the text readings are source of a condition to inspiration, but our own meditation, really, we need to get out from the text. And we need to have the, our own verse simple verse which is a more religious. so that will be i think they're really really important you know so uh, so many times sometimes i'll say like your own daily practice maybe like uh, you are reading some text but later on get the meaning get the meaning and then really do like more like a not somebody's verse composed you can look at from the blessing point of view yes but the really practice point of view, really have the, your own voice, verses. Uh, to, you, once you have, a, you know, the essence, you can create your own kind. Can be different. Every day can be different. But the essence is uh, consistent. Mm. The expression can be different. You know, so very beautiful. Very beautiful. Okay, good. One more question. <laughs> now we have this side with this. Now this side. <laughs> have any questions? Good. Any questions? And then how are you doing? Like let's all know like how your practice are going. Just tell me story. Tell me your story. 
How's your practice? Yeah. yeah. When it comes back over here. Okay, okay, go ahead. <laughs> that's why I'm like, I just fuck bait around. It's kind of about the question and also, you know, how maybe my practice is doing. So, my question will be about uh, the Dharma practice mm -hmm. from an individual point of view and also from like a community and like mm -hmm. a, you know, a, mm -hmm. to some extent social, but mm -hmm. you know, as a community. And from the perspective of, you know, we talked about the emptiness and, you know, emptiness of inherent existing of the, of the self, uh, specifically. And um, so, maybe to kind of, like, what, what I'm trying to get to, and I'll give an example later as well, but um, practicing our own emptiness mm -hmm. and our own... Uh, uh, and versus the other people are also the same way, right? Everybody that we see around us is also of the very similar nature or the same nature ultimately. Yes. And um, so coming back into the specific experience is like even yesterday, um, sometimes I wake up feeling very isolated, mm -hmm. alone, mm -hmm. there's no love, there's no care mm -hmm. in the world, let's say. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, and that brought me down for many hours. And mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out a way to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And at the end, I was listening to the teachings, and it comes back into, um, uh, it really transformed my mind into say like, oh, you know, uh, that, that emptiness of the self and all of these reifications of the self, etc. Mm -hmm. So basically, all of that emotions was wearing down on me because I was thinking like this kind of, the solid self was inside. Mm -hmm. But also I was wondering like, because um, yes, the ultimately, it is our own personal responsibility and it's mm -hmm. up to me mm -hmm. to recognize that mm -hmm. and that gave me some a lot of comfort mm -hmm. and a lot of power mm -hmm. a lot of like recognition just mm -hmm. suddenly like I could get myself out of that mood mm -hmm. but I also know that community and the people that you live with or practice with especially those that are near but also far is very important and like yes I can imagine through once things dissolve mm -hmm. like there's a lot of beings that ultimately love unconditionally including me mm -hmm. right and that that kind of experience that kind of transformation that comes through some recognition of emptiness is kind of very helpful mm -hmm. but i don't want to just isolate myself into just like this kind of personal thing how do we bring others mm -hmm. into our own practice mm -hmm. uh you know both in uh you know some spiritual sense, but also in an active sense, right? Yes, you know, yes. Bodhicitta, I think that cultivating that yes, yes. really helps. So, how do we bring in this kind of recognition of uh, kind of emptiness of inherent existence and mm -hmm. uh, primordial awareness, maybe kind of together? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, I think uh, <clears throat> Now, the, I think the, the, the one thing when we feel emotions and lonely or isolations, uh, meditation of emptiness is a, I mean, like, a, it's a, mm, in meditation emptiness not to, not to, not to not to feel not to not to feel that loneliness but meditation of emptiness are to see how i feel loneliness where you i think the first thing we have to see loneliness feelings usually is there's nobody you say like even you can have a surrounded with a hundred people you can still feel loneliness so it's, it's i think for the meditator no, step number one is where where you feeling the loneliness you know the the finding the way you feeling the loneliness i think that's really important but again uh, then as i mentioned going back to the motivation you know you want a dharma community you know once you once you really coming that into the from the you know like a positive motivation and that motivation will help us to believe our own self. I can create that community. I can become conditioned to creating that. So each of us can have a condition to creating the Dharma community. 
So that Dharma community comes from some kind of like a, not so much egotistical, but yes, there's some, there's some kind of like a belief involved, trust involved. And that's naturally, you know, like you can create it, that kind of active, engaging environment that you're naturally able to uh, create. And I think particularly in the, in the West, uh, I think it's very important to doing Dharma practice, particularly at the beginning, together as a community, having that element. It inspires each other, uh, and having then gradually, gradually you are integrated more. At the beginning, I think it's a very, very important to having spiritual community, practice together, uh, practice, practice together. Not like for five hours, six hours, but like uh, I have one friend, you know, he started Dharma, and he's like, make all the community so tired. <laughs> Like everybody have to request, can you please slow down? <laughs> it's like five hours too long. <laughs> you know, so I think, uh, yeah, I, yeah, just you know, positive motivation, and Dharma is the answer for really lots of pr uh, challenge, and everybody's going through the same thing. You know, let me create, let me involve. You know that I think the motivation will really help to engage. You know, motivation. Uh, did I answer your question? Okay. So I will say motivation. Yes, motivation and the the meditation of emptiness is uh, not to not so much to healing that lonely feeling but the meditation emptiness to seeing the way we feel the lonely that's i think the number one and uh, because is a is a you know one people can you know, what 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 means friendship what means friendship what really means friendship one person can have uh, so many friends but still can feel lonely. Uh, so what means? What is lonely? Lonely loneliness. Where's the where's the that the the real switch? The real switch is a minute. There's a, some kind of like a, you know, from Buddhist philosophical thinking that when you have a separation, me and they, that gap creates, that gap creates the, the lonely loneliness. That is the perfect recipe to create creating of a yeah. so you can have a even though you can say he's my trusted friend you are still you can have a 10 very trusted friend but you are still vulnerable to experiencing a loneliness because that 10 trusted friend still we have a, that gap uh, so so really if that is the case if that is the case then like really how we close that gap and you know I'm feeling the lonely because of I have that gap. So, to ultimate way of solving the lonely feelings, if I, when when I able to kind of dissolve that kind of duality and that gap, wherever, whenever, unconditional, you are kind of like a fulfilled. Uh, you know, so I think that's. Uh, you know, I, I mean, like it is a again same thing. Easier saying than easier said than done. Easier saying than done. I think is that there's lots of you know sometimes when I talking like that, yeah, I'm telling myself it's easier saying than done. Mm -hmm. Is I think this is a easier saying than done. Mm -hmm. uh, easier saying than done. That's I think uh, we need to acknowledge constantly in a dharma talk or dharma reading. Easy and saying than done. This mantra is important <laughs> because we, we are thinking like okay. Why this didn't happen? I did this whole thing. <laughs> I did one week retreat. Didn't happen. What happened? <laughs> Easy and saying than done. This mantra is very important, <laughs> particularly when the, I think intellectually make a sense. Intellectually make a sense. Yes, but now uh, I should do both. I also pay attention how to long-term solution, how to close that gap, duality. And also, I need to engage as a social living, living being. I need to get out. I need to walk in. I need to 
I need the vitamin D. <laughs> so, okay, we'll stop here and uh, show the.